I'm Zach Anderson, and coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, these gymnasts are looking to back up a strong season a year ago while celebrating a special milestone. Three times a week, WVU wrestling athletes come here to this $10 million performance center to work on their craft, which includes strengthening their bodies for the physical season ahead. Ofri Neve is the six foot six freshman forward from Israel that's bringing new skills to Mountaineer basketball. Ryan Darty joins us now, live in the studio, to tell us more. Right here, West Virginia Gymnastics became nationally recognized in multiple ways across 51 seasons, making four NCAA championship appearances since 2000, including a jump to the Big 12 in 2012. Big money sports like football and men's basketball have a large budget, and now WVU Wrestling benefits from their own state-of-the-art performance center, completed in 2022. I have the story on this facility that's used by hundreds of athletes every day. Camila Kovas has not played like a newcomer for West Virginia this season with her four years of experience for the South Carolina Gamecocks. However, this season for WVU, she leads the team and digs defensively and her impact goes beyond the court. Competitive multiplayer video game competitions, otherwise known as eSports, have become extremely popular in recent years and WVU is breaking the glass ceiling in eSports. Next on Mountaineer Playbook, a rebuild is on the horizon for West Virginia Volleyball, but 11 new players in Morgantown is exciting for this season and the future. I'm Zach Anderson, and that story next. However, this year is a special milestone, as 2024 marks the 50th anniversary of gymnastics at WVU. I have the story of what it means to the newest generation of gymnasts. Just around the corner in January of 2024, the WVU Gymnastics team is celebrating the program's 50th anniversary, which is a special milestone for fifth-year gymnast Abby Pearson, as the team's leading scorer over her career with more than 1,400 points. But we recently just celebrated uh, Linda and the work she did and seeing what it was like in the beginning that it wasn't the glitz and glamour with the sparkly Leos that we get to show in the Coliseum. Um, that there was a lot of hard work that went into just getting it started. Um, so that allowed me to be a little bit more grateful, see really where we came from. The team began its first season at the WVU Coliseum in 1974. Then after only one year, a pioneer of the sport named Linda Burdett Good took over the program as head coach in 1975, taking the Mountaineers to national prominence across 37 years. Now with 12 seasons as a leader of the program, current head coach Jason Butts cherishes the 50th anniversary and the celebration of women's athletics at West Virginia. It's exciting to be a part of it. It's a great representation of women's athletics, especially in West Virginia. And uh, it's you know provided a lot of uh, education, a lot of opportunities for young women over the past 50 years that otherwise wouldn't have been there. Right here, West Virginia Gymnastics became nationally recognized in multiple ways across 51 seasons, making four NCAA championship appearances since 2000, including a jump to the Big 12 in 2012. Pearson has been dominant in her four seasons as a Mountaineer. However, this 50th anniversary is a time where she reflects on the number of lives that this program has changed. I think that kind of captures this like 50th anniversary is just that how many lives that we were able to touch during this time and that people get to come back and say how amazing their time was here. The 50th anniversary will be celebrated during meets throughout the season, starting on January 7th against Temple, when these WVU gymnasts look to build on history. Imagine coming here to the Mountain State to play college volleyball all the way from Puerto Rico. Well, that's exactly what libero Camila Cobus has done. I have the story about this five foot six defensive specialist on why she chose West Virginia as her new home. 1,678 miles stretch from San Juan to Morgantown, and that's the journey that Camila Kovas made to play for the Mountaineers. The fifth year senior libero transferred in the WVU from South Carolina, and she has immediately become a vocal leader. I'm always communicating, always talking, even if it's like the most simple drill ever, I'm always like, communicating with my teammates, calling the ball, going for balls. Um, I think that was one of the biggest aspects of being a leader and having leadership. And then when we're in a game, just like being that person that stays motivated when things get tough. 
Kova started playing volleyball in her home country of Puerto Rico at the age of six. And now, after four collegiate seasons with the Gamecocks, she has become a new star on the back line for West Virginia. Camila Kovas has not played like a newcomer for West Virginia this season, with her four years of experience for the South Carolina Gamecocks. However, this season for WVU, she leads the team and digs defensively, and her impact goes beyond the court. Um, you know, she came here with high recommendations. Um, I had people contacted me and told me about her that, you know, you can't miss with her. Um, and, and it's true. I mean, she's, she's a great volleyball player, but even a better person. Kovas won over head coach Reed Sunahara and has grown up in her final season of college volleyball because now she's more than just a great defender. She's a motivator and a leader. So on the court, I'm just trying to keep my teammates, teammates pumped. Like, they make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Go for the next ball. But with South Carolina in the past, Kovas wants to be herself and be the best player possible for the Mountaineers. That's who I am right now, just trying to play my game, be the best I can be for this team. Her newest goal, getting wins here in the Coliseum. And Riley, Kovas is the only athlete on any WVU varsity team to hail from Puerto Rico. WVU women's soccer has a leader stepping up this season, and even though she's just over five feet, Number 23 is proving to be a powerhouse among her teammates. That's right, Riley. The Mountaineers just concluded their conference tournament, and their win in the semifinal marked Dan Stratford's 100th career win as a head coach. Manny Mardiege has the story. Thanks, Aaron. Another change for the WVU football team was at the quarterback position. They needed someone to step up, and one player did. 800 feet in the air. That's how far base jumpers leaped into the New River Gorge below. It's only once a year, the third Saturday in October in Fayette County, West Virginia. And I understand you went this year, Riley. Disc golf is played like traditional golf, but with a variety of discs. Riley, you can play disc golf for free at Cooper's Rock. Riley, you know who is on a winning streak? Coach Nikki Izzo Brown. Izzo Brown has never had a losing season as a head coach and has led WVU to 23 consecutive 10 plus winning seasons. What an exciting way to get active, Riley. And I can't wait to see swords clash this summer at the Olympics. That's right, Riley. And so far, it's been paying off for the Mountaineers. Tight end play has already improved compared to last season. Aaron Parker joins us now in the studio with his segment, Coach's Corner. Aaron? This event provides a great opportunity for kids to step away from the screen and find more physical ways to have fun. To learn more, you can visit the address listed at the bottom of your screen. And I'm Zach Anderson. Please like and follow our page on Facebook at Mountaineer Playbook. Don't miss the chance to celebrate the heart and soul of the game with us next time on Mountaineer Playbook. <laughs>